Not too long ago, we were all having brunch, going to the park, doing whatever we liked. And then just like that, a pandemic hit. But more specifically, just days ago, Minneapolis was a well-functioning city. And then overnight, it turned into this. This morning, Minneapolis is reeling. Tensions running high in a city on edge. A third night of protest again turning violent. Demonstrators clashing with police. Buildings, including this evacuated police precinct, burning. Protesters cheering as it went up in flames. It's a scene of utter chaos. Right now, this fire is raging out of control, and smoke is billowing into the air, can be seen for miles. The rioting, a dramatic escalation from more peaceful protests earlier in the day. To tear down our city like this, what's this proving? People who are supposed to protect and serve us sit up and murder us in cold blood. In South Minneapolis and nearby St. Paul, looters ransack businesses. In Louisville, Kentucky, seven people were shot at a rally against police brutality. While nationwide, from Chicago to New York to Denver, there is mounting outrage over the death of 46-year-old George Floyd. For years, people have mocked gun owners, asking questions like, why do you need that? What do you think is going to happen? Huh? What? We don't live in a wild, wild west anymore. We live in a civilized society. Why do you need a gun in a civilized society? Yeah, the same civilized society that has had two world wars and debatably on the verge of a third one. So I ask, can anyone guarantee that there will never be another world war? Can anyone guarantee that the Koreans will never have to do this again? Can you guarantee me that Katrina will never happen again? Or better yet, of all the people who went and bought a gun for the very first time just months ago, how many of them thought they'd be dealing with a pandemic that forced them to see their vulnerability and motivated them to buy a gun for the first time? A lot of people in America have way too much faith in the structures and systems surrounding them. They think everything that's at their service today will be there tomorrow. But in my 36 years of life, the thing that I've learned is that the only thing I can rely on is change. Change will always be there, ready and waiting to throw your life for a loop in the blink of an eye. As the current state of Minneapolis has shown you, society can collapse overnight in ways you can never imagine and with unapologetic speed and efficiency. No matter how noble the catalyst, there will always be other people ready to pervert good intentions with opportunistic violence and destruction. And you're seeing that play out in Minneapolis. I ain't got part of that shit. I just came with a hammer and smashed the window. Hey, I'm gonna fight you right now. You wanna, you wanna go? Let's, let's go. Somebody hold my blood. Hey, somebody hold my blood. Hey, hey, hey. Are you a fucking cop? What's up? But this shouldn't shock anyone. There's nothing new under the sun. We've seen this type of civil unrest before. All one has to do is look at history. The Second Amendment is not about vigilantism or fulfilling some purge fantasy. It's about preserving the right of the people to protect themselves, the people they care about, and their country. So tell me who you are. Uh, well, I mean, free Americans, yeah. And so, what are you doing today? Uh, we were out here yesterday too. Uh, down on the original protest site. So basically, you've seen the records that cops keep. And cops are a lot less likely to try and tread on people's rights when there's other armed Americans with them. So we figured it's about damn time that some, or at least I figure that it's about damn time some heavily armed rednecks stood with fellow citizens. And why are you protecting this door? Well, I mean, this wasn't exactly a yeah, specimen we action. We, we we've been kind of, so well, we just kind of ended up here. We, we've been moving around and just trying to see what see what's what without getting necessarily completely slapped by massive groups of people. And uh, while we were walking, somebody mentioned that there were some guys at the back of us after we wanted to know if they were over to go buy something. And uh, they said that they're they're closed and they're defending their businesses. Oh yeah, Target's on fire. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. But and anyway, so we heard that we're like, well, we, we better we better kid up and go see if these guys need help. And it turns out these guys are out here with machete and shattered windows trying to keep looters out of the business because cops can't get in here. And so, you know, I figure before they were cops, they were just Americans. So here we are. Already on during the LA riots. Or during the LA riots. Collateral damage. Everyone protecting their own stuff. That's where you only got term.
South Korea. So bottom line, just for Floyd, and uh, I hope they stop looting at some point. If there are more of us, we could go stop them from looting, but it's just us four. Yeah, we, we definitely don't agree with the looting. Yeah, no, looting. But we do looting agree with the, the cause of the protest. Yeah, definite protest. During times like this, the mainstream media is not your friend. They're strangers in your living room who benefit the most when the world is burning. So verify what they actually tell you before making decisions based on what they tell you. The government is also not your friend. The U.S. government was designed to serve the people, not itself. So hold them accountable and stop handing them your rights for the appearance of safety. Because when the streets are on fire, the only people who you can depend on is yourself and the people around you. Protect your communities. Don't let outsiders gas you up into helping them destroy your community while they go back to where they came from and then the government tries to come in and leverage it all as an excuse to try to gain more power over you in the name of law and order. I say try because the people shouldn't be afraid of the government. The government should be afraid of the people. They said, they said run up in here and see what happened. On fair out here with them blicks on them. Blick, blicks on them. Run up in this. Black on. You see that? Black on. Run up in this. Oh my mama, we gonna do that to y'all. <laughs> the stability of society is fragile as hell. One minute, you're creating cringy TikTok dance videos. <laughs> and then the next, every building on your block is on fire. When your city looks like this, understand no one's coming to save you. You're on your own whether you like it or not. So stop asking why anyone needs this or that and exercise your second amendment right to have what you need to protect yourself and the people you love. Because like I said before, the only thing you can rely on is change. And just saw my own girl Nikki from South Lawn lost her son, man. Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more, man. Like, you youngsters just going around, just busting guns in crowds, kids getting killed, you know, and it's clearly the generation after us, man, that's so lost, man. You know, man, I came into Houston and told me, yeah, Floyd, that young the truth, man, right there, because he could bust a gun. Man, I knew it was crazy then, my age saying this here, man, you know what I'm saying? And condoning this shit, bro, you know what I'm saying? And like, half the niggas shooting them guns, go home and they knees shaking at night. But they don't show it to nobody because, you know, they ain't tough then. Hey, man, come on home, man. One day it's going to be you and God. You're going up or you're going down. Right now, there's a culture war against the Second Amendment, which is why I need your help spreading our message to counter their message. You can help do this by clicking the heart and share button and leaving a comment. Let my voice be your voice and let them know you want to keep America tactical because the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed wasn't a suggestion. It was a directive. Also, if you're wondering where to purchase your all guns or essential merchandise, click the link in the description section of this video.